Islam is the declaration that there is no God but Allah and Muhammad is his messenger alayhi salatu Islam is also that you must perform your salat, you must establish salat. And so, if I do not perform my salat, I am not a Muslim. Oh yes, if I die, you'll have to perform salat al janazah over my body, yes. But according to this answer, in that part up there, if I do not perform my salat, I'm not a Muslim. If I'm not a Muslim, Allah says in the Quran, He says, fear me as you ought to fear me and do not die except as a Muslim. وَلَا تَمُوتُنَّ إِلَّا وَأَنْتُمْ مُسْلِمُونَ Do not die except in a state of submission to the supreme authority of Allah. Not the supreme authority of the state, but the supreme authority of Allah. Then you are Muslim. Islam is that you must fast in the month of Ramadan. And so if I do not fast in Ramadan and I do not have a proper excuse for it, I'm not a Muslim. Islam is that I must pay the zakat when the state is established. And the state collects the zakat. Which state is authorized to collect the zakat? The state over which Amir al muminin presides. That state is authorized to collect the zakat and to pay the zakat. But other than that, zakat becomes a voluntary, a voluntary charity. Islam is that I must perform the hajj if I have the means to do so. And in order to have the means to perform the hajj, I must not have any debts. I must not have any debts. Not five dollars that I borrowed from Ustaz Harun to pay back after one week. No, no. We're talking about debts which I do not have the means to repay. Like long-term debts. If you have those debts that you do not have the means to repay and therefore you cannot repay, you cannot perform the Hajj until you have paid your debts. And so this was the answer to question one. And then he asked, what is Iman? And the Prophet replied, and he said that Iman is that you must have Iman. Iman or faith is that you must have faith. Faith in Allah. Faith in his messengers, faith in the angels, faith in his books, faith in the last day, etc. But in the Quran, Allah had taught us. The dwellers of the desert, the Badawi, the Arab, they declared a bit too quickly. All that is Arabu Aman. We have it. We have faith. And Allah responded in Surah Al Hujurat, Kulam took me no say to them, Most certainly you do not as yet have a Iman or faith. Well, I can call Aslamna. You should rather confine yourself to say, We have entered into Islam. Walamna Yanhul Iman of Fikulubikum. For as yet, Iman has not entered into your hearts. And so, question one, the answer is located on the lips. And then it has to be lived. Question two, the answer is located that Islam must now travel from the lips and must enter 
into the heart. What happens when faith enters into the heart? Question three is, what is an ihsan? Is there something after iman? The Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam replies and he says that ihsan is an ta'abud Allah ka'annaka tarah that you should worship Allah that you should live for Allah as though you are seeing him. But can we see Allah? When Musa alayhi salam, the Prophet Moses, was on the mountain, Mount Sinai, he spoke and he said to Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, Arini anzuri, like, show me yourself, I want to see you with these eyes. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala responded and he says, Lan jarani. No. Not possible. Not possible. You can't see me. Not with these eyes. Well then what does it mean? That you should worship Allah, the God of Abraham alayhi salam, as though you were seeing him. What does it mean? The companions asked the Prophet alayhi salam, O Messenger of Allah, will we see Allah on the last day? Will we be able to see Allah on the last day? He responded and he asked, Do you have any difficulty in seeing the sun when it is noon time? Hmm? They said, No. Not when it is midday. No difficulty in seeing the sun. He asked, Do you have any difficulty in seeing the moon? When it is, uh, in Pakistan, they call it Chaudhuika Chand. Uh, when it is the full moon, they said, no. When it is the full moon, we have no difficulty in seeing the moon. He said, that's how you're going to see your Lord on the last day. How could he say that that's how you'll see your Lord when in the Qur'an Allah has said, you can't see me. What is the explanation for this? You can't see me with these eyes. Do we have any other eyes beside these eyes? Do we have any other ears beside these ears? Welcome to spirituality. This is our subject. Do we have any other eyes beside these eyes? Do we have any other means of acquiring knowledge other than through external observation? National University of Singapore says no. No. External observation is the only source of knowledge. Harvard University says the same thing, and Princeton and Yale. Hmm? These are the only eyes that we have. These are the only ears that we have. But the Quran says no. The Quran gives a different epistemology from that godless world out there, which cloaks itself in the mantle of a word called secularism. I want to take you to Surah Al-Hajj. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addresses the people who are internally dead, spiritually dead. And he says to them, بَعْدَ عُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ He says to them, أَفَلَمْ يَسِيرُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ Will they not travel to the earth? Perchance that by traveling, their dead hearts might come alive. 
فَتَكُونَ لَهُمْ قُلُوبُ يَعْقِلُونَ بِهَا And now with the heart which has come alive, now they will be able to understand what the intellect could not, what rationality could not, what external observation could not deliver. أَوْ أَذَانٌ يَسْمَعُونَ بِهَا Now that the heart has come alive, now they'll be able to hear what otherwise they could not hear. Let me interrupt this verse of the Quran to take you to a hadith of the Prophet We'll come back to the ayah. The Jews lived amongst us Muslims for 1300 years. No one else in the world would open the doors for them. In Britain it was prohibited for them to live. Prohibited. Hmm. They were being persecuted all over the face of the earth. But the world of Islam opened the doors for them and they lived amongst us in security. We guaranteed to them security of life and of property. We recognized their religion. We even assisted them in the enforcement of their religious law. This is what we did for 1300 years. After all of that had happened, then said the Prophet ﷺ, this hadith is in Sahih Bukhari, it is in Sahih Muslim, it is therefore muttafaqun alayh, it is the strongest possible hadith. They can't shake it, not even with a bulldozer. What did he say? He said, You will surely fight the Jews. And you will surely kill them, meaning you will be successful in that fight. Who spoke these words? Not me. Muhammad And we should have the freedom, the religious freedom, to quote from the Quran and to quote from the Prophet If we do not have that freedom, then tell us so. You will surely fight the Jews. And you will surely kill them. Hatta yaqulul hajar. At that time he said, the stones will speak. Ya Muslim, hadha yahudiyun wara'i, there's a Jew hiding behind me. Fata'ala faqtul, so come, come and kill him. <laughs> 